What's going on guys, this is Versus Z bringing you a video review of the 1 to 100 scale no grade Destiny Gundam vs Infinite Justice Gundam clear color set, both from Gundam Seed Destiny. In part 1 we'll be going over the Destiny Gundam, then in part 2 we'll spend some time with Infinite Justice. And then for the third and last part we'll be going over my final thoughts, what I think about these two kits during construction and after construction, and are these two kits going to be worth the purchase whether you get them as the clear color set or separately in their normal color versions. But now let's go over the Infinite Justice. It's sleek, slender, agile, and it won't hesitate to kick you in the forehead if you piss him off. It's also pink, and this is Infinite Justice, guys. Details, or rather not the details, but the sharpness of this guy just speaks out. Infinite Justice has nothing but angles and sharp points everywhere, head to toe, front and back. And not to mention he's pink. Now the details wise, you can kind of make out the details in the molded, um, the molded details on the pieces, uh, even though it is clear. Most of it which is clear pink and you've got this nice clear white I guess you would say. Uh, a little more on the, uh, definitely more on the clear white aspect rather than Destiny's just clear clear. Um, which, also, which actually goes for a good effect if you ask me. And it's also equipped with this black but nearly brown. I'm not sure what's supposed to be in clear color, but you guys know the default Infinite Justice colors. Then, this is where it gets to the cool part, because when you turn it around and you view the backpack, you see nothing but purple, or what should be clear purple, with a little bit more of those solid pieces and a little bit of uh, yellow all over. Now, this model kit, compared to the Destiny, is equipped with stickers as you can see from those thrusters all the way all the way to this pointy thing and the on the backpack I'm not sure what it's supposed to be and you get some right there on the chest let me just show you the sticker sheet and oh my goodness that is a sticker sheet here's my thumb and that's a, a sticker sheet my thumb really just looked like a lizard just now anyway but that is the huge sticker sheet let me just kinda compare it to the torso of the model kit as you can see it's it's huge it's friggin huge all of them well not all of them but a good majority of them go on that backpack with Fathom 1 now this strip these two strips here on the chest are definitely stickers and then you also get of course the eye cameras the head the forehead camera right here sorry the forehead camera right there which looks nice but then you also have this piece right here which is also a sticker I'm guessing that in the normal colored version that's a sticker as well, but it kind of works, kind of doesn't. If you're looking at it close, you're like, oh crap, it's a friggin' sticker. When they could have just put like a one of these clear purple pieces right behind there and it would look a lot better, but hey. So with that said, I think it's about time we cover the articulation and possibility of this figure. Um, and also with that being said, this is a 1 to 100 scale no grade from the C&C Destiny line, and we are familiar with their possibility, it's just... Very basic, I wouldn't say it's not great, but it's pretty basic. Now the head has that same chicken head movement. I really hate using that term, but it's the chicken head movement. And unlike Destiny's where it's a solid piece, his is a clear piece. I'm not sure if that's very safe. You got a ball jointed neck on top, so you can get the wiggling and all that stuff. And we'll see how that actually plays as a good thing later on. Now the interesting thing about this kit is, just like the Destiny, in the arms. Now it doesn't have that mechanism where the arms can go as high as the Destiny from the torso to the uh, to the shoulders, but you can get some back and forward movement. You can rotate it. Uh, the arms are separate from the uh, the the uh, shoulder pieces, as you can see here. So you can get you can get a rotation from the shoulder armor to go up, and then another rotation at the uh, at the uh, actual elbow there. You notice there's a gap here too, so that this seems to have the same problem as Destiny whenever you rotate it whenever you rotate the bicep uh, so you're just gonna have to apply some pressure and make sure it goes back in there now one neat thing about this uh, particular model kit is that when you do bend the elbow here that's not the only point you actually get a two-point elbow bend which is really nice and definitely a lot better than Destiny's uh, single hinge joint um, you also get a, a ball jointed um, ball jointed hands here that you can pop off and swap for another hand that I'll show you guys later. Uh, the chest is actually far worse than the Destiny. 
Um, so when you rotate it, unlike the Destiny, well, it's a good thing though because unlike the Destiny, when you rotate it, you you don't get the impression that oh yeah, I can probably rotate, and nothing will pop off. And then when you realize some things have popped off, you're you're fooled. But here though, it's a good thing because at least you're limited by these huge flaps of these huge side skirts, which by the way can only go in and out of the body about that far. Which also, by the way, the legs can go in and out of the body only that far. So that's a little bit of a disappointment there. Uh, the front skirts, I believe, did come separate. If not, then of course you can just sm uh, snap them separately and make them that way. The back skirt is uh, back skirt stationary, so you just lift the front skirts, and they don't do a very good job of lifting up at all anyway. You probably should try and rotate the side skirts a little bit sideways, and then you'll get a little bit more. All of this. All of this here, all the issues that come from the hips and down, really come from the side skirts and also just the way the the, uh, the hip area is constructed, which will go for a huge knock for, against this uh, model kit. But anyway, you get if you can get that uh, front skirt to rotate up, and you know it's no problem. You just rotate these side skirts a little bit to the side, and you can get the legs to go about. You can go about that far forward, that far backwards, which really is not that much of a difference, but something noticeable for effect. And then, like I said, in and out of the body, just about that far. Um, and that's only because the side skirts aren't in the way, but as long as you rotate them, you'll be fine. So that's pretty alright, I guess. You also still get a double jointed knee bend, which is just about the same amount as uh, Destiny and there's no effect there's no flaps or anything in the back here but it's it is nice the different coloration of of the leg here you get the purple thruster white and then pink which is just really nice and then you do get to see some of the inner workings of the well more or less inner workings of the joints here like the ankles it's a double joint ankle system just like destiny except that it's more effective on the infinite justice you get the uh, poly cap hinge on top and the ball joint here on the lower end uh, of the ankle. This piece here is separate so it will move up and down and the feet can go about that far down, that far up, and you've got just a nice range of movement on the feet themselves. But is that enough to get you some nice poses? I don't know but once we'll answer that question later. Here is a quick look at the enormous amount of I guess I would say extras rather than accessories that this Infinite Justice comes with. Let's start with the beam rifle, and it's very, very nicely colored if you ask me. You've got the purple and the white on it. I could have swore there's supposed to be some pink on it, but whatever. You got a rotating sculpt, and that's about it. I think the only other cool part about this uh, rifle is just, just the different colors on it. It's not solid and boring and bland like Destiny is, but it is very nice, and you you do get some detail on it once you uh, once you make them out, but they're there. You put it on the hand just like you would with any of the Seed Destiny model kits. You pop off this portion of the, pop off this portion of the, this portion of the hand, put the uh, gun in his palm, close it back in. I really wish they would come up with something else better than that, or at least do it differently, like high grade way. But I don't know. It's just very time consuming and not very friendly to my fingers. So I just leave the hand. I just leave the gun in his hand. You could though store it right behind here in his back skirt if Fathom 1 would move. There's a little hole back there in his back skirt, but uh, you could store the beam rifle there if you'd like as well. You also get two beam saber hilts, which do go on his side skirts, but they're not there for a reason, I'll tell you why at the end. You also do get two beam saber beams, and they fit perfectly in these holes. Now you notice that they're curved a little bit, and you could easily do that. They don't come this way, but you could easily do that just by taking your finger uh, taking your two fingers, running them through, and basically you make them form into that shape. Pretty easy. I do that to all my beams. You also get a combined beam saber hilt, and it's actually two separate pieces for some odd reason. Uh, well, actually, I know the reason, but you, there are two separate pieces, just remember that. Uh, you do get this piece, you can take the beam saber beams, attach them on both ends, and you eventually get what I believe has come to, call, come to be called the beam lance. And it's quite the lengthy weapon. And yep, more beams. These two specific beams go on the Fathom 1. So that way when Atherton wants to fly through people and cut through people, he uses his wings instead. 
So just in the same manner as you would put the beams on the Destiny's uh, anti-ship sword, you would take one end, plug it in. I'll make sure the beams are up this way, as you can hopefully tell. Take one end, plug that one in, and then just in the same fashion, actually it's easier to go from the bottom up. So from the bottom, and then you got to apply some pressure, place it in there, and it ends up looking like that. Looks real nice when it, when it's all armed up. Now these particular beams are for his beam kick thing that go in his legs. You basically plug this end into his toe, right in the purple part. Then you plug this end onto his knee right there. It's a little time consuming to do, so I'm not going to take the time to do that, but that's the idea. Now the shield is just... It's crazy. It's a whole lot of things going on in the shield, and this is probably one of the most... Um, sought after things when you get the uh, infinite justice. First of all, you get just the shield itself. It mounts onto the forearm just like this. You take this peg here and it'll plug into the forearm right there. I think I got it on the wrong side. There you go. And then for some odd reason you can get a handle right here. I don't know, maybe to hold the shield like that. I don't know. Uh, but it's a multi-purpose shield as we all know. So you do get the beam shield effect part right here which looks like it came straight off of the um, strike freedom probably did and then you put it onto here and I find the easiest thing to do is just wiggle this piece off since it's only attached onto a single peg take that you can plug that on top of that and then you plug this on top of that and you have the beam shield and it looks really nice it really does but I'm not gonna leave it on there because there's another bit of accessory that you can take out from this shield and it's this claw dagger thing here now it's really neat because there's like sort of gears in there. When you open one, it opens the other. So that's really neat there. And I like the I like uh, the effect of the clear parts here because you can see all that in action. And this is really nice. It also comes with the uh, wire for you to do you know maybe a pose for that. And it comes with two pieces that you have to plug into here and into the shield. They're right here. Take these two uh, darker pieces. I believe. You plug this end. No, I might get this all wrong because I actually haven't done it myself. Okay, so you take the uh, you take this part and plug this one into the shield. Then you take the wire piece, plug that in. So sorry. Anyway, you take the wire piece, plug that in, plug this end into the claw. And then that'll give you the wired shooting out of the or the claw shooting out of the shield effect. Now, I don't know how effective it is because it's actually somewhat of a heavy piece. As you can see, it's kind of flopping down. So without the use of a stand for this piece itself, it's a little slightly pointless unless you make it so that the claw looks like it's just barely about to shoot out, and that way at least it could sit on the shield. But um, it's a nice little effect. It's nice that it comes with it. But as uh, posing it that way, I don't think it's very, uh, very successful. And you do have somewhat of a hard time taking it out just because it is clear plastic to clear plastic. Now the final awesome thing about the shield is this shield beam saber huge ass weapon thing. And I think this is my favorite aspect of the shield, especially when you combine the... Uh, beam saber with the beam shield and you get this badass looking machine that protects and attacks at the same time. I just there's just something about this shield that's just really, really attractive. Oh, and I can't forget the clear Atherinzala placard with his information and all that stuff. But that's not the final accessory. No 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 it, it is not done yet. There's one more thing and you're looking at it already. It's the backpack itself. I still consider this as an accessory because it has lots of features on it. Well, enough features on it to consider it as an extra accessory. So let me just talk about this one for a second. Anyway, here is the Fathom 1 and oh my goodness, I can't even fit in the entire camera. As you can see, I've already placed these the beams on its wings and they do really look awesome. Uh, I like the different coloration on the backpack. You got the purple, you got the black, you got some yellow, some white, and even some of the... Uh, I believe this is gray, um, and it's it's just it looks really really awesome, and it's huge, 
And on top of that, you even get some mechanical details. You can see you get to see some of the thrusters there, and that's really cool right there. Uh, it, you can mess with the wings. It is articulated. You can fold them in and out. You can even take the thrusters themselves and kind of angle them in a nice way. And it's all good. You even get these cannons up here that are articulated. But the one thing that I don't like about it is the amount of stickers. Now, more than half of the sticker sheet that came with this model kit, more than half of those stickers, you need to apply on the Fathom 1, like these two here. And, you know, I already I was already trying to put the sticker back right there. And you got some fold-up stickers. Well, not fold-up stickers, but stickers that fold on top of each other, like this one. This one is an entire folding uh, sticker. These two white pieces here are folding stickers. And, oh my goodness, you can... You can even see like the cracks, and maybe you can, maybe you can't, but from far, there you go. Even from far away, you can't. There's no tricking the human eye. It's, it's apparent that those are stickers. And I guess, you know, what else can you do? This is a no grade. Uh, the neat thing about this, though, it's got these handles that I'm not even going to bother trying to get out. But you can get those handles if you can get those handles out. And uh, I guess pose the infinite justice kind of hand gliding from it. And you know, like I said, it's almost pointless without a stand. But, I mean, it's cool. I mean, unless you pose the Infinite Justice on the ground and it kind of looks like he's hand gliding, and I'm pretty sure you can do that, then. And if you pull it off, then that's awesome. So, I mean, I really, other than that, I really like the look of this backpack. I really like the, uh, this, this bird, this jet feeling to it. it it's really awesome. Uh, so to transform it into its backpack mode, it's actually pretty simple. You just take this part here, uh, unhinge it from that. I probably just hinged it on that way. This clear yellow piece will go into this gap of the backpack right there. So it just should fall into that. And then you just align these. And then the wings, you can leave them out that way. I think Infinite Justice looks pretty cool that way. Or you can then fold them in and angle them flat, flush. I like to angle them out just to add a little bit more uh, angles to the Infinite Justice as if it didn't have any. Uh, didn't have enough. Now take these two pieces down here, fold them out like that, and then you just attach the backpack onto Infinite Justice, and there you go. Now there's also another mode for Infinite Justice that requires the backpack to be, you know, in flight mode, and it does require that you pop his head off. Now this is one of the issues I have with this model kit because if you're not careful, you can easily break off a V fin or even break off this joint here. So once you pop off the head, I'm sorry if I'm talking too fast. You just take the backpack, fold it in. There'll be these two tabs right there that'll go into these two holes in his shoulders. I don't know if you can make it out, but there they are. They will just tab in that way. Sometimes you think they'd snap in, and they kind of just give off this sound for no apparent reason. But it sits in there, and you can leave it that way, so that way Infinite Justice will have the cannons in front of them, kind of like the IWSP pack. Then you reattach Infinite Justice's head. And there you go. Well, of course, you flip the wings open, and that looks neat. And is it back heavy? That's a good question. I don't really know. No, I'm just kidding. Um, of course it's back heavy. Jeez, look at this. It just keeps falling. I mean, you could angle the legs far back like that. Angle the legs far back, and then just do some balance weight stuff. And it'll actually help if you had the shield on him, which I don't. But it is just a matter of balance, and he can stand, um, surprisingly. But uh, it is it does get back heavy. He will tip over if you don't balance him correctly, but you know if you get it right, then it gives for a pretty good effect. Well, what about the posability, you ask? Well, really, I don't even want to answer that question, but just like the Destiny, it does suffer with posability. And without the use of a proper action base, well, I wouldn't say action base, but a stand that should have came with these kits, you're pretty much stuck with ground-based poses that make him look like he's taking a crap on the ground. Um, this pose isn't too bad. I'm kind of thinking of trying to work around it. But if it weren't for a better construction of the hips, then I think this model kit would have been a little bit more awesome. Let me just show you one of the disadvantages of this model kit that a lot of people will be a little bit, well, let me just say, completely disappointed in. That! What's that? I mean, I can't even get a sexy midair pose with his legs in the, you know, dramatic midair pose. Like, you want to see something sexy? Now that they're sexy. But this, what is this? It looks like a ballerina just went biking for 20 miles and is 
butt hurts and he can't even do as much as he could. Ah! I mean, well, he could still do this. And some stuff like this. But without the use of a proper stand, you're stuck holding it just like this. I mean, it should be fine unless you want your hand to be the action base itself for the next few days. And since I'm in the model kit bashing mode right now, I might as well tell you why I don't display the hilts on his hips. It's the main reason being that they will not stay there for their own sake. I mean, well, this one can, but this one, the slightest touch and... Yeah, it's gone, so I just don't even leave it there. It's either... No, there's no either. I just remove them, forget about them, and if I do need to pose them, I'll take this one instead, put the two beam sabers on there, and I'm set. Will I ever use these? Probably not. Oh, and before I forget, he does come with a splayed reaching out hand. Alright, alright, let's face it. Infinite Justice looks cool. With its jet light features and its hot pink attraction, it's just... It looks cool, and I gotta admit, I love the way it looks. The only problem is the lower half of the body. Proportion-wise, it is that sleek, slender, sexy, um, slim, athletic, you know, figure that the that they should have the the way they should have with their uh, animation versions, and that's cool. But it actually is a lot shorter than the Destiny Gundam. I'll bring that in in the uh, final part of this video. Um, the proportions, they're okay until you get to certain parts of the model kit. Now I'm not sure if I have the, I'm not sure if I have the design of the uh, mobile suit and the fists and the head to blame for that. Or maybe it's just the uh, lack of the um, backpack that gives off that false image. I'm not sure what it is. But there's just something about this, uh, there's just something about this design that gives me the impression that it's uh, off-proportioned, even though it tried to be well-proportioned to its uh, uh, animated counterpart. Now, he does have a lot of playability, as you saw, but playability and posability kind of fall in the same category, at least for me. Now, if you're someone who can continuously who continuously just wants to pose their model kits in different particular poses, um, Infinite Justice might work out for you because of the amount of accessories it comes with. You can pose him in kick poses, in shooting poses. Um, you can use you can use him in shield that has a extra shield and a claw and a beam saber on it kind of pose, or hand glider type of poses. Whatever works for you. Sometimes you might need a stand, and that might get on your nerves because the uh, it does lack the proper stand that it needs and if you try to get an action base one I think it might still be a little bit lacking and there's no port on this model kit where you can stick um, that stand into unless you had the hook ones here but that would prevent uh, that would prevent the legs from going in and out or it would just basically hinder the already hindered um, leg articulation which I think is important when when it comes to Infinite Justice because he is the Gundam in Gundam Seed Destiny that's known to kick people in the forehead and things like that. And if you can't do that, then Infinite Justice is just infinite just without the ice because ice is cool and that was a bad joke. But anyway, um, he does look cool. He does have a high playability. This is just the hugest, biggest knock against this model kit for me is the lacking lower half of the body. The arms work fine, the backpack works fine, the head is fine, everything else is fine. But until you get to these legs, and it's not even the feet, it's just the legs, the hips and legs area, it's just very lacking and it falls short of full satisfaction for me. Um, but that doesn't mean it's a bad model kit. But, that's it for now. I'll save the rest for the final part. I hope you guys did catch the first part of this review where I reviewed the clear color version of the Destiny Gundam. And I hope to see you guys at the last part where I go over my full final thoughts and I'll let you know whether I think these two kits are worth their purchase, whether you get them in this clear color set or separately as their normal release versions. And which ones would probably be a better way to enjoy the characters Destiny and Infinite Justice, whether it's high grade, no grade, or master grade, even though we all know the answer already, but I'm going to elaborate on that in the final part, and that's what it's for. So I hope to see you guys there, thanks for watching, and I hope you guys got something out of this. See you later.